Well, hello, adventure seekers. Today, Tanya and I are the clueless travelers, and we are in Antofagasta, Chile. And uh, as you may know, Antofagasta means against Fagasto. So if we find uh, any Fagastos, we'll certainly not be in favor of them. Okay, and uh, Tanya has booked us on a tour. So we're going to go on a bus and see what the hell is going on. Where here. you can do the activity of sandboard and many other activities like surfing uh, because of the... Uh, take your time to look things. But first uh, activity we have to do but is going to walk around the ruins. Well, I think we got a little bit more information about this. Uh, this uh, complex here was a uh, smelter and a mining facility uh, for both uh, saltpeter and copper. And this part of Chile at one point belonged to Bolivia. And so the Bolivians brought all of their copper here to be processed. And so that's, that's the thing and that's what this is. So what's very cool about this whole area here is that it reminds us in many ways of Nevada because, uh, you know, it's actually, except it's not, not so hot. It's, uh, uh, it's very nice weather today, but there's lots of, you know, sand and rocks and their whole economy was based on extraction and mining just as ne was Nevada. Uh, silver was also mined here. And uh, now you have what's uh, left. We have condos. Tanya, another interesting thing about this whole area is uh, uh, the uh, production of saltpeter. And, you know, when I was growing up, we always thought saltpeter was something that, uh, uh, that the army put in your uh, food so that you would reduce your sexual urges. You probably don't remember any of that because you were so <laughs> young. But uh, so, that, so when they really? said they were mining saltpeter, you know, so I guess what that means is we were totally misled and confused. Uh, saltpeter is uh, essentially sodium nitrate and it was produced here and all throughout northern Chile uh, for uh, fertilizer among other things. It's also used for explosives but uh, fertilizer was the main thing. Chile was uh, and you know whoever owned this which was a lot of it at the time was either Peru or Bolivia a lot of northern Chile uh, was uh, the world's largest producer of uh, sodium nitrate at that time and which helped uh, fuel a lot of agriculture uh, production in Europe and in the United States. So, fun facts. Use that in trivia sometime. They have a little museum here next to uh, all of this, uh, this former mining facility, and they have a, a, a mural behind me showing a typical storekeeper, and he's got what, one of my favorite products. You can see there, what is it? It's spam! Oh my God! I mean, even then, uh, they uh, they knew what they were doing. I'm just talking to our guide Martin here, asking him the true meaning of the word Anto Fagasta. Fagasta. Yes. And he tells me what summarize it. The place it? where you can hide copper. The place where you can hide copper. Yes. And so, if I'm really looking for copper, this is a place where I should be. Yeah. Looking. Here are a lot of copper, but actually. I don't know where to look. Very far away in the side of the region. Ah, I don't have enough time for that. No. Or no. energy. But there are several rocks with copper in the side of the museum. In the front there. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, well, thank you very much. I You're thought welcome. maybe it was Anto, like against Vagasta. <laughs> but no, it's no. not. No, no, no it's, it's a, the, it's a Quechua language. Thank you very much. And now you're going to be on YouTube. Did you know that? Yes, yes. What's the channel? Well, channel? The channel is Slower Travel. A slower Travel. Slower Travel. You check yeah. it out and there you'll be. I will be. Yeah, okay. I do Good that. Much. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> We're in the heart of Antofagasta, and uh, we are right now just outside 
Yep. Uh, oh, here comes the lovely Tanya hello. giving me some more information. Yes? Uh, the train station. Yes. It is still operating yes. in the train station. Yes. But its sole mission is to transport yes. copper. Yes. To the port. Uh, to the port. To the port. Transport copper to the port. And of course, Tanya, I, we also know that uh, Antifagasto uh, was founded uh, as a mining town. Yeah, uh, prospectors came here, and there, I mean, there was nothing here. This is in the uh, late 1880s. And uh, prospectors came here and went out into the desert looking for minerals. And they found out that it was very mineral rich and there was a lot of copper here. And uh, yeah, and so here's the, uh, what, what is the train station that was built here to transport the copper from here in town over to the port. And uh, apparently it's still being used as Tanya says. Uh, yeah. For that. Yeah. yeah. Good research. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And behind me are some uh, old train cars. This reminds me of our trip to Ely, Nevada. And so if you look back on one of our older videos, uh, check it out. Ely, Nevada, home of the uh, Nevada Railroad uh, with these old uh, trains. All of these are newer trains. Tanya and I are strolling through the old train yard here in Antofagasto. And, uh, you know, there's some fabulously interesting things here, uh, you know, uh, for some people. Uh, well, and for us, of course, here's, here are some old buckets that you could use for, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, all beer or anything. They probably used them for copper. This is what I think is really cool. This reminds me of an old Laurel and Hardy movie. You remember these things when they're going down the tracks and they're going like crazy before the train actually comes. Oh, and I just happened upon one of our guides, Yared. Hi, this is Yared. <laughs> this is Yared. Um, can you tell us a little bit of what we're seeing here? Uh, well, here when the in the train station of uh, Tobagasta, uh, this is an historical train station because it's not used anymore. Now it's a museum. Uh, this was one of the main things that driven the uh, development of this because uh, at the very beginning they, uh, they, they came here because this area is really rich in minerals but there is not much more so the train was actually very important to transport all the materials but are you from the mines me, but are you telling me that now they don't uh, transport any copper from here at all they do they do in fact they, they transport to the same lines uh, ah. they transport copper because the, the copper is now the main export of Chile, but in a different place. Yes, but not this from is, here. No, because, because this, is the, this is the old station. The museum. Ah, I get it now. Um, but it, the train still comes with here, but it's, this station is not used anymore. I get it. It was used back then because it's, we still had passengers, and it was the main method of transportation. Now we have roads with our motor. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you. Yeah. Some of my some of my best friends just kind of hanging out and yeah, man. Life's good, isn't it? Oh, isn't this the best? A couple of his buddies over here. They're just waiting for the boats to come in. So they can steal their fish. I know what the hell have we gotten ourselves into this time? We are out here in the Atacama Desert in far northern Chile. And, uh, you know, actually it kind of looks a little bit like Nevada. Not quite as pretty. Not quite as pretty as Nevada, says Tanya. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty bleak, to tell you the truth. And uh, Out in the middle of, but the ocean, Pacific is right there. Uh, about uh, half hour away. Half hour away or so, yeah. So yeah. we've been taking a drive up here and uh, there's nothing here but uh, a bunch of rocks and uh, Maybe some small little snakes. And deadly spiders. And deadly spiders. And uh, we'll see if we can avoid those. 
So check this out, this highway out here. See, it's just like Nevada. It's like 95 or something like that. People just driving out here. There's a lot of uh, mining and uh, so about the same. No casinos though. So we're out here and we see some statues out here in the middle of the desert. It looks like the Chilean version of Burning Man. But uh, and we even have a, a Chilean rock band that's out here. We're going to see what the hell this is all about. Well, we're pulling away a little bit from uh, all the excitement of that band and they had a couple of dancers that were twirling around but let's just sort of look at the uh, uh, quiet beauty uh, of this desert I mean it's uh, I mean it, there is a certain charm to it and apparently because we're up in the far northern part of uh, Chile the, the I mean there's nothing else going on here and so the uh, uh, the skies are perfect at night for uh, for stargazing, and I suppose if uh, you see any UFOs, then that's uh, that's what you'd see there as well. Um, Arica is the name of this town that's uh, about no, oh, I don't know, 35 kilometers from here. It has about 300,000 people, and uh, there's a big military base here because. Uh, this part of Chile is very close to the borders of Bolivia and Peru. They're not, they don't have any conflict with them right now, but from time to time that occurs. There's also uh, a big uh, prison for both men and women. This is a very uh, popular trafficking spot for cocaine, heroin, um, other drugs that are coming uh, from uh, Colombia, uh, Bolivia, uh, even Peru, and coming through here so then they can leave out of Chile toward uh, uh, toward Europe or the United States. <clears throat> so consequently a lot of these people get caught and uh, they're, uh, they have these huge prisons for them. So that's, uh, that's kind of what they got going for them here. And here we have the loneliest road in Chile. Similar to uh, Route 50 in Nevada. Don't see any cars. Well, this is just terribly exciting. Tanya and I are here at a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Arica, uh, Chile. And this is the site of an ancient Chinchorro uh, burial ground. And uh, these cats lived here from, in this area, from about 5400 to 800 BC and they were doing some excavation for some new construction and found this entire uh, cemetery with all these people in here. And so they've uh, kind of set it aside and they put a glass thing on top. I don't know if you can see all these, but the Chinchuro were uh, very interesting people. They uh, learned how to mummy, or t taught themselves, I guess, how to mummify uh, all of, the, all of their uh, deceased, so it didn't matter if they're men, women, or, uh, or little children. And they would dismember them, they would uh, dry them, they would take out the brains and eyes and things like that, and then, you know, stuff part of it with cotton. Cotton was a very big uh, uh, item around here, and uh, yeah. Here they are. It was quite a deal. And then, and if that wouldn't take care of it, uh, that would be called like artificial mummification. If that didn't take care of it, then it is so hot and dry here that uh, they would sort of dry naturally in the sands. They didn't live very long. The Chinchur lived about, what did she say, like about you 30? know, 32 for the men and 30 for the women, which was pretty interesting that men actually lived longer. I assume that a lot of the women probably died in, in childbirth, but... There you go, the Chinchorros. And these Chinchorro people uh, lived by the sea. So we are just literally uh, just right, almost right across the street from where the harbor is here. But there was a big settlement of them, which is about 80 kilometers south of here. And this is a uh, big mural photo that uh, uh, represents where, where they were. And they would, they would kill sea lions they would take out their stomachs of the sea lion and they would uh, clean it all out and then dry it in some way and then they would use that as a, a bladder to collect water to then go back to uh, where their settlement was. These guys, these people were 
uh, big fish eaters. That's mainly what they did. And they competed with the sea lions for that uh, food source. Sometimes they would even go out with the sea lions uh, hmm. to try mm-hmm. and uh, get the fish. Of course, get the fish before the sea lions did, which would be quite a trick, I would think. The chinchuro uh, were nothing new to a carb-free diet. Uh, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of us are trying to reduce our... Uh, uh, intake of carbohydrates and get maybe to zero carbs or very low carbs. Uh, the chinchuros um, had virtually a carbohydrate free diet because they live mostly on fish and they had very healthy teeth um, and uh, but their teeth were worn down from chewing uh, hard foods with sand residue so probably uh, you know shellfish and that sort of thing and nonetheless they uh, they died relatively early, but I think one of the main reasons they died was because of malaria, because down in these, uh, away from the sea, but in the valley here, uh, there were a lot of uh, brackish water and mosquitoes were very plentiful. And I think that was one of the main reasons that these people didn't have a high longevity rate. So one last little bit of information about the Chinchoros is that um, they never domesticated any animals, they never grew any crops, all they did was uh, fish and extract uh, fish and shellfish. Um, They also were excellent divers and I guess they would dive down and free dive and uh, compete with the sea lions. to get their get their food, they also develop all kinds of hooks and uh, fishing implements and spears and that sort of thing to get that. Anyway, uh, if you're ever interested in any, in any more about the Chinchoro civilization, here's where you need to come to Erica, Chile, in the far north of the country, and uh, I just think it's fascinating, and so does Tanya. Who would have known? <laughs> She is such a good sport. I have to, I have to tell you that. Anyway, here's just a, a quick a view of the uh, city of Arica. And uh, in just a few minutes, I think we're going to go have some, uh, uh, I don't know, should we have some uh, seafood for lunch? What do you think? Absolutely. We seafood and we'll eat it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us on this little investigation into the Chinchoro civilization and our uh, visit to Arica, Chile, and we'll uh, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.